Thank you for joining us on the weekly football coaches show here on Surrey on the go. I'm your host, Nathan Walls. We'll speak with the coaches this week and we'll find out what happened in their games this past Friday and we'll preview upcoming games for this Friday night. First, we'll talk with North Surrey head coach Jackson Smith. Coach Jackson Smith, congratulations on your first win last Friday. How does that feel? Feels great. It feels good. Uh, I'm excited for the kids. Like I said, they had a they worked really hard this summer, and and uh, I'm glad they got to reap some of the benefits of their hard work on Friday um, against a good South Stokes team and a good uh, young head coach and staff on the rise. And so, you know, uh, we were excited to get out there and compete and come out with a win. Can you provide us a game summary? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like in the first half we threw some pretty heavy blows that were, you know that were imperative in us and uh, getting a lead pretty early. Um, I thought that Jake ran the ball really efficiently. Uh, he ended up with about 150 yards. I think he averaged probably upwards of six yards of carry um, before we ended up, you know, giving him a little bit of a spell in the second half. Um, on the receiving end, uh, the ball was distributed pretty well. We had a we had Derek Simmons catch two touchdowns. Um, for 150 yards, and uh, we had another touchdown thrown to Owen McMillan, um, who's kind of a Swiss Army knife for us. Um, and we also had a punt return for a touchdown in special teams uh, from Isaac Webb. So, you know, there's some scoring from from a lot of different folks, and that's what our offense is designed to do. And so, you know, we were pleased in that regard. Obviously, for a lot of teams, um, it's, it's difficult to play Mount Airy. Um, that's who you played your first week. Um, I thought you guys had a good offense in the scrimmage against Elkin. And so to see you guys come out with 48 points, uh, what do you think that says about your team? Um, I, I feel like, you know, I feel like we have a chance to be pretty special on offense this year. Um, and that's with, with a lot of youth still on that unit. Um, but, you know, I think the whole purpose for us is, you know, we established the run game early, um, and that opened up passing lanes for us um, in the secondary. And I think that's what we're going to continue to try to do is, uh, you know, make sure that that we get the hand, we get the ball in the hands of Jake Simmons, who's a dynamic playmaker, and we try to get people kind of sucked into the box and maybe a little bit them to sleep a little bit. And that's when we're going to start taking shots over the top. Um, and that's what I felt like we did. That was kind of the game plan going in. And, uh, and, you know, that's going to probably be the game plan going, you know, from here on out is, is you know, make people respect us in the run game. And then, and then like I said, take our shots when we feel like we, we have a chance to, to win some, maybe some one-on-one -on -one balls, some 50-50 balls, or uh, maybe try to take the top off the defense. And what do you feel like your team still needs to work on? Improve oh, on? Oh, I mean, well, we still, I mean, I think, I think for us, we have to consistently try to win every rep. Um, you know, we, we ask a lot of guys to, to go, go both ways. Um, you know, and we try to get them spells from, from some other players and stuff like that. But, you know, I just want, I, from what I want to see from us is I just want to make sure that we're competing rep in and rep out that we don't waste a possession, that we don't waste a drive, that we don't, uh, you know, I just, I want to be able to finish. I want to be able to finish drives. I want to be able to finish quarters. Um, you know, I felt like if there was any, Anything that I was a little disappointed about with last Friday it was the way that we came out in the second half um, with a pretty good lead. Uh, I just I, I want to see our team finish a little bit more um, when we have somebody on the ropes. So you know if, if there was any if there was anything to improve on, it definitely be that. But I was really proud of our kids' effort and our and our execution for a majority of the game. Okay, let's preview South Cal South Caldwell. Who you guys host? in Mount Airy on Friday night. They're 2-0. and They've put up a lot of points in both games. What can you tell us about the upcoming game this Friday? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be another another really good non-conference opponent. But, uh, you know, we we kind of felt like we set up our schedule that way to, you know, our, our goal is to go 1-0 and every week. Um, but from, from, a, from a larger perspective, we want to try to schedule our non-conference to – to really make sure that we're battle tested both as coaches and as players uh, for our conference schedule. And when we were going through, you know, to try to see who do we need to pick up, you know, in the non-conference, um, South Caldwell is a team that, that runs the gun tee and under center wing tee, and they run it very, very well. 
Um, they play with some tempo. They, they get in a lot of formations. They try to window dress um, different things and, and test your eye discipline and, and your discipline as a player. Um, so, you know, that was, that was one thing that stood out on tape was that, that what they do is they do it in a lot of different multiple ways um, and they do it really fast. So, so making sure that we're disciplined and knowing our keys and our rules and, uh, and making sure that we're not falling for the eye candy in the backfield and that, you know, we're reading those guards and those gap schemes and, and flying around and, and being physical at the point of attack. Um, that's what we kind of want to see because we know we're going to see some wing T in our conference. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's kind of similar to week one in Mount Airy and, and, you know, we're like, Hey, they do the, you know, they run the triple price probably, you know, better than a lot of people in the state. And so South Caldwell kind of fits that bill too, that we feel like they run the gun team, the wing team better, you know, just as good as anybody else, um, in the state of North Carolina. So getting a chance to get them on the schedule and allowing us to prepare for our, for our conference schedule with, with an opponent like that, um, we feel like it's going to make us a lot better. Coach Smith, any other thoughts heading into this game? No, I mean it's it's a great chance for us to to have the opportunity to compete against a four A high school and and kind of see where we measure up. Um, you know, we're gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna really look outside of what we do. Um, we're gonna try to try to stay as true to our identity offensively and defensively as much as we can. Um, you know, and and teams like teams like South Caldwell, we gotta make sure that we're in mentally and physically the best the best shape we can be just because naturally that we that we're going to be a smaller football program than them uh you know naturally have a little bit less depth so to go four quarters with a with a team uh you know that comes from the 4a ranks we got to make sure that we're mentally and physically prepared to handle that toll for four quarters coach smith thank you for joining us this week on the weekly coaches show hey i appreciate you guys thank you for all you do for us and our kids Next, we'll talk with Elkin head football coach, Scott Wood. Coach Scott Wood, thank you for joining us today, man. Thank you for having us. Welcome. Um, why don't you provide us a game summary of your game this last Friday against West uh, Wilkes? We were worried going into West Wilkes that their size would be a problem for us, and it was offensively and defensively, especially in the first half. Um Seemed like we couldn't get anything going offensively. Uh, defensively, you know, we got off to a big start. Uh, Rhett rolled down from safety and had a pick six, I don't know, 50 or 60 yards. Uh, so it was a good start for us, but uh, they just pounded right back at us. And uh, they did that, you know, throughout the night. Uh, kids held on and come out in the second half and really late third quarter – they uh, got a little momentum and uh, had an interception, I think, by Aaron Caudill. And we put that one in the end zone. And it seemed like uh, after that, we played a lot better. So uh, they just – they got to come out from the get-go with that mentality they had uh, late in the game. Right. You mentioned two interceptions, one by Aaron Caudill. What was the earlier interception? Who, who intercepted that ball? Red Purdue. Rep Purdue, the quarterback. Actually, was on the first defensive series of the game. He had a pick six. Right. So, it sounds like your defense played well again. Well, at time, I mean, we – they beat us to death with the run and just, just kept coming at us. And, uh, we, we you know, we've got to do a better job getting off blocks and, and linebackers feeling because they they had several five, six, seven-yard runs uh, continuously against our defense. Mm -hmm. Do you think if your team had had come out with with more momentum earlier in the game, you guys could have won this, this game against West Wilkes? Oh, definitely. I mean, if you're if you're in a game, this seven point game, you know, that'd go either way on any day. Uh, so it's one we'd like to have again. But uh, play the game and you live with the results. So we're we're working on getting better with us during this open week. This week, and then uh, next week we play uh, Surrey Center. All right. Um, <clears throat> describe the end of the game to me. I think you guys were down 21-7 to seven late. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir. And uh, Caudill had that interception, and we, we ran the ball in from there. Um, then the next offense, it seemed like we stopped them on defense in the next offensive series. 
was about a, I won't say 50 yard pass to James Steele. Um, we got the ball back with about four minutes left on the punt. It was coming down the field, and uh, we did not get the uh, the fourth down there. From and we were on the 30 going in. I we ended up going for it on fourth down, and they stopped Peyton in the backfield. So uh, you know, that's that's kind of disheartening. It's one of them. We kind of felt like we had a drive going. Uh, make one more block. You know, you never know. All right. Do you feel like your offense played better against West Wilkes than they did the first week? No, nah, no. Nah. Uh, of course, West Wilkes, I think their defensive linemen were, were bigger and stronger. Uh, so we had more trouble blocking them than we did in week one. Right. <clears throat> so you have a bye week this coming week? Yes. Is that right? Okay. Yes. We're working following- on us today if – if the rain holds off, they're calling for more rain today. But we're we're gonna go out and do something today. Right. Yeah. The the rain will will be a factor this week. Uh, we'll have to see what this tropical storm does. Right. Right now, it's uh, putting down a lot of rain in in southeast North Carolina. But obviously, if it shifts west, <laughs> that could be us too. They predict those sometimes about like they predict the snow. So uh, we'll take what we get when we get it. Right, right. And you have Surrey Central in two weeks? Yes, sir. So what's the team doing to prepare for that game? On right, this now, we're just, right now we're working on Elkin High School right. and trying to make Elkin High School better. Uh, not looking much on Surrey Central. Of course, we don't have anything on them yet. Uh, we're just uh, working on us. Well, Coach Wood, thanks for joining us on the Weekly Coaches Show. Thank you for having us. Sir. Now we'll talk with Mount Airy head football coach J.K. Atkins. Coach, any comments on your team's performance tonight against East Surrey? Um, I, I felt like we played well uh, from the get-go. Defense came out, set the tone, um, scored first couple of possessions that we that we touched the football. Um, anytime you play great team defense like we do, you have a chance to win on any given night. And you combine that with a lot of experience on offense and the explosive players, guys who understand and know the system, and, uh, and that's the result of all those things. Right. Um, Tyler Mason okay after he was a little hobbled there? Yeah, he's fine. He, he'll be fine. Um, do you ever feel blessed to really have such talented kids, especially at running back, receiver, kicker, quarterback, all those skilled positions? Every day. You know, I, I, those guys are. I, I've coached football for a long time, you know, and uh, I understand that uh, you don't get a group like this all the time. And uh, they were talented coming in, but they've done all the right things since they've come in as freshmen. The senior class has weight room, you know, day after day, semester after semester, and uh, it's a product of a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication from those guys. And uh, yeah, we're, we're blessed. We know it, and uh, we enjoy it. And for next week's preview, uh, who are you guys playing next Friday? We have Surrey Central next Friday. Any thoughts on that matchup? I know they've played pretty well tonight so far, according to the score with East Wilkes. And East Wilkes has a good triple option offense, too. Yes, yeah. I mean, East is a former assistant of mine, is the head coach there, is doing a great job in Travis Walker. And, uh, you know, they, they are a triple option team. Money. Uh, Monty Southern is a triple option guy. Uh, they ran the triple for a long time there at Surrey Central, and uh, so they understand the, the ins and outs. But I think our, our game has, de- has developed over the last year and a half. We're not solely relying on triple. Uh, there's a lot of different elements to our game, inside power run game, outside threats at receivers. So, I mean, it, and we're pretty well rounded right now. We're not hanging our hat on any one player or, or any one set of plays. Uh, we're, we're pretty balanced as far as what we can do attacking sideline to sideline. Now let's speak with Surrey Central head football coach, Monty Southern. Coach Monty Southern, thank you for joining us on the weekly football coaches show. Hey, Nathan, how are you doing today? Doing well. Thank you. Can you provide us a game summary of your game last Friday against East Wilkes? Yeah, it was, a, it was a tough game for us. It was a very hard-fought game on both sides of the ball. Um, I thought both teams just, you know, you could tell absolutely 
did not want to lose that game. Uh, I thought I thought kids from both sides were laying it out on line. It was uh, again as all the, as all the area coaches say, it was a tough night to play. It was it was muggy hot. Um, I thought both teams. Like I said I thought both teams really got after it. We we started off pretty good in the first half. Um, was able to get on the board twice um, and hold hold them to zero points. So we were up twelve zero at halftime. Um, as is typical, I think, of a coach, I felt like maybe we had some good field position and opportunities in the first half we did not take advantage of. And I, I was afraid that might come back to home us because uh, I knew they, they were going to receive the ball to start the second half. And, uh, I, you know, by the end of the game, I felt like it probably did. We probably should have had at least a third score um, in the first half. Again, yeah, I'm just basing that on on having good quality field position. and uh, But we weren't able to capitalize. And second half was really, really a tough battle. Our kids were starting to wear down. Um they never quit playing with their hearts, but I could tell their legs were giving out a little bit. And uh, East Hooks was able to score once in the third, once in the fourth. Um, they went for two the second time and made it 15-12. We have missed both our extra points. Um, so they made it 15-12. That was right around the seven-minute mark. Um, we were able to put together a pretty good drive, went down, scored again, um, decided to go for two and did not get it. So – that point we were up 18 15 uh right at about three minutes maybe just a little bit of change and uh then again they put together a nice drive and our defense was battling hard we ended up stopping them about the 10 but that was with seven seconds to go and they made a field goal that tied it um so we went into overtime 18 all they uh they chose to play defense first and we were not able to score and then they scored a touchdown on their uh, third down play okay of course, that's what ended it 20, 24 to 18. Yes, sir. Right. Um, I saw some of your players in the sheets and Dobson afterwards. They looked exhausted. Um, I told them I heard you guys played well, though, and, and good effort. Um, you think the humidity got to them in the second half? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like it did, but you know, at the same time, I tell my guys all the time, look, you know, both teams are playing in the same conditions. I felt like East Wilkes handled it a little bit better than we did. Um, I, you know, it's just one of those things where I say, I, I think our kids were so juiced up. They had so much adrenaline flowing early. Um, we may have over overdone that just a little bit. And by the second half, we, we had a lot of kids that cramped. Uh, lost lost a couple of kids. Actually, one to, a, to an injury, very minor injury. He'll be back this week. Um, but one, we have one uh, starting player that's cramping so bad that he he was not able to return and, and missed the whole fourth quarter in overtime. So, but you know that's those are the breaks in football. You you know that you know every once in a while you're going to lose a guy here or there. You hope it's not serious, and you hope that next guy steps up and, and does his job. Something I want to point out about East Wilkes: uh, they opened the season with a win on the road at West Wilkes, ran for over 300 yards against them. In saying that. For Surrey Central this past week in the 24-18 loss, who were your stars of the game? Um, well, I thought a quarterback. I thought Mason Jewell had a pretty good game throwing the ball, um, a little bit more consistent than he was the, the prior week um, at Allegheny. Our first score was a long touchdown pass. Golly, Nathan, I can't remember exactly, but thinking it was about – it was probably about 75 to 80 yards touchdown pass to Kyle Inman. Um, he got behind the defense a little bit. Mason hit him in stride, never slowed down. And, and then didn't get caught from behind. So we, we said so we had a few explosive plays in the passing game, um, which, which I was I was pleased to see because I, I felt like that against Allegheny, I felt we were really inconsistent in the passing game. We had an explosive play, but we also had a lot of bad plays. I, I, saw, I thought we were a little better there. Um, didn't run the ball quite as well. But then when I went back and looked at the stat sheet, we just, uh, you know, East Wilkes runs that offense where if they're doing a good job getting first downs, you don't get a ton of possessions on the way that they like to run the ball. And, um, if I looked at the stat sheet correctly, we only ran 40 plays in regulation. That's probably about 20 plays less than a typical Friday night. So we just – we had some good plays, but at the same time, we didn't get to run as many plays. Um, so defensively, I thought White Wall had another really strong game uh, tackling. He, he just seems to always be around the ball. Uh, Evan Wall had an interception in the first quarter um, that got us extra possession. So, again, you know, we, we've got some guys that are doing some really good things just – Need to be a little bit more consistent and then figure out how to finish a little bit stronger. Okay. You guys host Mount Airy this coming Friday. What would you like to say about that? Uh, you know, it's a tough matchup. I mean, you know, I'm sure every school that is playing Mount Airy this year is just, you know, they've got it marked on their schedule. Look, we know we got – we're going to have to play our absolute best and honestly hope that they have an off night 
just for us to be able to be competitive and be in the game. Um, but, you know, right. we didn't get to practice yesterday, unfortunately. Um, there was right. some flooding in parts of the county, and they actually sent the schools home early. But So today will be our first day seeing all the guys together. And, you know, my message to them is going to be, look, you know, our job as a team, our job as coaches, our job as players is to get better this week. Um, we need to do that through practice. But also, I think, you know, it's the, the age-old adage, you know, you get better by playing against good competition. So we know we're going to get that this week. And I just hope we'll go out and that we'll compete and get after it and, and see if we can improve. I, you know what to look – you know what to look for in Mount Airy. Uh, I mean, their offense, their defense. Um, their offense is pick your poison if you're playing them. Yeah. <laughs> They're so deep, uh, especially at running back. Um, it's, it's like an all-star team. Yeah. It really is. Um, how do you prepare for a team like that? It's like I said, it's hard because their their team speed is so great. I mean, you know, as we're as we're putting a scout team O together or a scout team D for that matter, either, you know, we're we're gonna put guys in places that we think can try to simulate what their players are doing. Um, but you know, if the if the guys you're putting in the spot, if he runs a four eight or a four nine and the, the guy that they have in that start position is running more like a four five or a four six, it's just it's 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 hard to create what they do. Um and as you said, they just kind of come at you in weights. You know, last year uh, the Reed kid it was go- dealing with injury. He didn't even play against us. So we saw some of those other backs, but he wasn't even a part of their stable last year during our week. So again, he's just, you know, he's just another big, strong kid. Um, like you said, it's, you really can't focus too much in on one. I know everybody, you know, the Mason kid is phenomenal. One of the best backs I've ever seen in this area. Um, and, and you'd like to say, Hey, we're going to focus on him and try to eliminate him from the game plan. But and if, if you give him too much focus, there's so many other guys that can hurt you, quarterback included. His Gallimore kid's a great runner as well. Right. You're absolutely right about that. Well, Coach, uh, good luck to you this coming week. And thanks for joining us on the Coaches Show. Absolutely, Nathan. I appreciate it. Thanks for all you guys do. Now let's discuss East Surrey. East Surrey lost last week to Mount Airy by a score of 49 to nothing. And this week, they host West Stokes, the visitors from King. West Stokes is one and one and just came off a loss, 14 to seven at the hands of Randleman. East Surrey will try to get their first win of the season in Pilot Mountain. Running down the games one last time for this Friday, North Surrey hosts 2 and 0 South Caldwell in Mount Airy. Surrey Central hosts Mount Airy. Elkin has a bye week. And East Surrey hosts West Stokes in Pilot Mountain. All games are at 7.30 p.m. I want to encourage all the viewers to go out to the football games this year. Try to attend at least one football game at each of the schools. Buy a ticket. Go to the concession stands. Buy a meal. Buy some merchandise. Money you spend benefits the kids of Surrey County. So when you're going to these games, remember that. That's all for this week. Thank you for joining us on the Surrey on the Go Football Coaches Show.